Black as a pit from pole to pole. I thank whatever God may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutches of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Even though I've been bludgeoned, my head is bloodied, but unbowed. Beyond this place of raft and tear looms but the horror of the shade. And yet the menace of the year finds it shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Invictus by William Murder Sinley. What up, Des Moines? This is Dr. Nagus M. Hotep here with Babylon Makes the Rules. Uh, I'm here to let you know that also Babylon Makes the Rules is uh, here from Amplified DSM. Uh, I know I recently found out some information about some negative uh, emails that came in. I wasn't uh, privy to it till now, but still, uh, everybody has their own lens that they look at life from. And because my lens might be different from yours, I'm not preaching hate. I'm preaching facts. You can go to your library and dig up this information yourself. So this is why I'm here. Because I'm in the belly of the beast, better known as the heart of Babylon, Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, tonight I want to talk to you about an article I read, I uh, was looking at just the other day. Uh, about a Harvard study by AFP. It was a Harvard study that finds that implicit racial bias is the highest among white people. Harvard University study. It says, if there's one thing we should all be able to agree on, is that all human beings belong to the same species, Homo sapien. But a new study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science on Monday has found a yielding gap between what people claim to believe and what they actually hold true. A team from Harvard and Tuff gathered data from more than 6,000 subjects who took part in, a 13, in 13 experiments that tested their implicit biases. An overwhelming majority of over 90% explicitly say that white people and non-white people are equally human. But on an implicit measure, white U.S. participants as well as white participants from other countries consistently associate the attribute human as opposed to animal with their own group more than other racial groups. Conversely, blacks and Asians and Hispanics participants show no such bias equally associated with their own group and white people with human. The biggest takeaway for me is that we're still grappling in a new form of sentiment that has been around for centuries. First author Christian Morehouse, a PhD, a student at Harvard University, told AFP throughout history, the dehumanization of other races have been used to, as a pretext for inequality and unequal treatment ranging from police brutality all the way to genocide. Implicit associated tests. The test relied on the implicit association test, a tool developed in 1990s and now is widely used in the field. A computer-based measure, it tested the strength of associations between two concepts, 
For example, black and white are gay and straight people. And attributes like good or bad. The ideal is that easier pairing as measuring by faster key response are more strongly associated in the minds than difficult pairings as measured by slowly response. Researchers believe that IAT tests reveals attitudes that people would be unwilling to state publicly or might not even be aware of on a conscious level. Across all experiments, 61% of white participants associated white people more with human than black people more with animals. An event greater number, an an even greater number, 69% of white participants associated white human beings more than Asian human beings with animals. And the same result occurred for white people taking a white Hispanic test. These effects held true across age, religion, and education of participants by of participants, but did vary by political affiliation and gender. Self-identification, conservatives and men expressed slightly stronger implicit human equals white association. Non-white people did not show an implicit bias in favor of their own racial group compared to white people. But they did show a bias towards whiteness as more humans when they tested between white people and other minority groups. For example, Asians asked to take a test that assessed their attitudes towards white people versus black people. From a historical hierarchy, Morehouse attributed these findings to the fact that white people are associated uh, and socially and economically dominant in the United States, where 85% of their participants were from 8.5% were from Western Europe. She theorized that whites, that whites, you might expect all races to be more biased in favor of their own in group. Such sentiment might be canceled out by the lower standings of the American society resulting in overall neutrality. The fact that third party participants were biased in favor of white people when assessed against another race demonstrates how powerful their social hierarchy is, she said. Similarly, Tests of those used in experiments are available to take it. It's a a little site here. This was a study that was done at Harvard. And uh, I think Harvard did a study and found out that water was wet. You know, uh, it's a historical fact of the existence of this nation and how it was created. And from a historical basis, this nation was created and it was divided from the beginning. From a historical standpoint, uh, the Maryland Doctrine of Exclusion was created in 1638 by the Maryland Colony Council. And then... uh, this exclusionary doctrine that uh, was brought forth. It said, neither the existing black population, their descendants, nor any other blacks shall be permitted to enjoy the fruits of white society. The doctrine was written to ensure that blacks would remain a subordinate, non-competitive, non-compensated workforce. And in 1661, for example, a law was passed in Barbados that was then adopted by Antigua, Jamaica, and South Carolina, and beyond, and declared that Africans were a pagan, unhuman, 
indistinct, treacherous kind of people, and that white slavers should therefore assume their total control over their lives. The scale of backbreaking workloads expected to expected of enslaved African people and the way that it rose through time explains how this fueled the industrialization and modernization of Europe and this country and how black lives raised the standards of living for people living all over this world. That's the creation of this nation. Because after that, preceding that, we could go from a historical standpoint and look at that. In 1705, in the Virginia General Assembly passed a law that transformed black indentured servants into enslaved people. The Virginia State Act of 1705 condemned many men, women, and children to a lifetime of slavery, even if they were only days away from being freed from their indentured status. What was the purpose of the Virginia Act of 1705? In the U.S., the slave codes were a set of discriminatory rules and acted con- to control enslaved people of African descent and to protect white people from the danger of slave rebellions. The slave code stripped enslaved people of their civil and human rights. The Stono Rebellion, Sono Rebellion of South Carolina, historically speaking, on September the 9th of 1739, the British colony of South Carolina was shaken by a slave uprising that culminated with the death of 60 people, led by an Angola named Jim May. A group of 20 enslaved people organized a rebellion on the banks of the Stono River. After breaking into Hutchins' store, the band, now armed with guns, called for their liberty. They marched. Overseers were killed. Reluctant enslaved people were forced to join the company. The group reached at Cedo River, where the colonists descended on them and killed most of all of the rebels. The survivors were sold into the West Indies. So primarily speaking, the history of this country was set entirely to utilize Africans as capital and to build this nation. After the Stono Rebellion in 1740, it was the South Carolina Negro Act was created. And in it, in that act, it prohibited enslaved people from growing their own food, assembling in groups, earning money, against the law for them to read. If an individual was voice stressed and unwilling to do the work, a thrashing or murder was legalized. Traveling through time, 1857, Dred Scott v. Sanford. In that ruling, the Supreme Court stated that enslaved people were not citizens of the United States and therefore could not expect any protection from the federal government or the courts. The opinion also stated that Congress 
had no authority to ban slavery from national territories. 1863 through 1867, the Emancipation Proclamation, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment of the Constitution was ratified. The passing of these constitutional policies were engendered to liberate African people who were forced to labor on death camps that they called plantations, working from can't see in the morning to can't see at night. Yet laws historically were written on tablets of stones and papyrus and sheepskin and goatskin, beautiful words composed to eradicate societal cruelties. Nevertheless, these quasi-virtuous statements mean nothing if they're not enforced with the execution of the recommended legislation. In conclusion, Reconstruction was a noble idea, but it never came to fruition. Then we're still dealing with the systematic racism and redlining. Legalized segregation by the federal government that denied individuals opportun- black individuals opportunities, Hispanic individuals to live in certain communities. Asian couldn't live in certain communities. And we wonder why it took Harvard such a long time to do a study to find out about implicit bias in this country. See, uh, my name is Dr. Nagusim Hotep. I'm a cultural strategist, a sociologist, a historiographer, an African historiographer. And I'm not speaking something that I'm not, that's not valid. Historical facts say this. There's a need for people to, they want to be allies and allyship, that's wonderful. But in all actuality, racism is here to stay. We see it every day. And it doesn't have to deal with one ethnic group against another. Because sometimes we do it against each other, do it to ourselves. Just saw this week down in Mississippi, a little 10-year-old boy was following the rules that his mother told him. One of stepfather or whatever came a to the house acting crazy attacking and mom told her oldest boy to call the police and and do and follow their instructions he did exactly what he was instructed to do and an individual who they called their best police officer in that town shot a little 10 year old boy in the chest who had nothing in his hands That self-hatred is instilled deep in the hearts of a lot of people. I remember my dad. I know it was, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm not gonna talk about my dad. But I remember one day as a a kid down in Houston, Texas. I was uh maybe about. Nine, eight, eight years old, and it was a bunch of dogs going down the street. They, some of them had collars, some of them didn't, and one female was in heat, and it was a a group of male dogs just running up behind her, 
And me being the little knucklehead that I was, I didn't know I was doing a scientific experiment. I picked up a rock and I threw the rock and it flew in the air, went across the street and it went into the pack. Which one hollered? The one that I hit. That's what the word will do to you sometimes. This is Dr. Nagusim Hotel. I'm enjoying this. And I hope that you do too. If you uh, are looking around and knowing that you need some assistance with uh, cultural competency, I am also licensed through the Iowa Law Enforcement Academy as an expert in race relations regarding people of African descent. Uh, I've, for the past five years, I've communicated with uh, police, cadets, officers, all law enforcement officers across the entire state of Iowa. With the exception of the city of Des Moines and Cedar Rapids, everyone in this state who's been through a law enforcement academy has sat in front of me while I talked to them about race. They can handle it. We're going to keep on keeping on. And I said Babylon makes the rules. But I know. Jaja lives forever. Everybody, you have a great weekend. Happy Memorial Day. And Juneteenth coming up. Shouting out to everybody in that social media world. Have a good one.